For the first learning objective, let's get a better understanding of what we mean by wicked problems. Think about some of these global sustainability issues. All of these are global problems. Because the capacity to address them effectively at a local or even national level is limited, even if global action must be driven from below. However, many of these big problems are now framed by the need to tackle the big three sustainability challenges that are defined on the slide, which are climate change, peak oil, or rather our dependency on fossil fuels and global poverty. So any successes in managing climate change reducing our oil dependency and reducing global poverty will help us tackle all the other problems. When talking about the many societal and environmental challenges we face, people increasingly describe them as wicked problems. So on the graph here you can see that over time our social and economic challenges are increasing in complexity at an increasing rate. However, our public systems that are aimed to tackle and manage them are increasingly becoming less complex. So what Rittle and Weber pointed out when they first talked about wicked problems was that in many cases it's better to acknowledge up front that science is ill-equipped to tackle social challenges. There are two basic reasons for the wickedness of these problems, complexity and conflict. These problems are often ambiguous and hard to pin down because they seem to consist of many partial but interrelated challenges. So it's hard to tell what button to push or what lever to pull to make them go away. And the people affected by these problems will have very different views on what the nature of the problem is and how it can be tackled. So a solution that can be considered optimal from an objective, impartial point of view does not exist. We also need to distinguish wicked problems from other types of problems and the leadership approach to their solutions. Tame problems are often familiar or recurring and can be resolved using rational, linear decision-making processes. Unilateral acts by experts such as doctors or accountants often solve tame problems. The ability of these ac experts to unilaterally solve tame problems means that tame problem solving requires minimal involvement of the actors involved in a problem. For example, all that an accountant needs to successfully perform an audit is to complete a record of the company's financial statements. For the most part, she or he does not need to take into account the perspectives, beliefs and interests of the people who belong to the company she or he is auditing. Crisis problems, as the name suggests, are those that arise from a crisis of some sort, so for example bushfires. These problems are self-evident and must be addressed urgently, allowing little time for decision making. Although the people who are directly affected by the crisis may not fully understand it or how to solve it, after all, it can be hard to see the forest for the burning trees in the middle of a disaster. Our expectations of those charged with addressing the problem are clear. Provide the answer and fix the problem. Wicked problems, as we said earlier, is unclear and the problem definition isn't finite. Often it requires an adaptive approach, which requires innovation and learning, and requires the involvement of the many stakeholders and environments, and also requires an experimentation approach. Now let's look at the five key characteristics of wicked problems. Rittle and Weber originally had ten but in the interest of simplifying them, they've been narrowed down to five. With the first one, it's not possible to write a well-defined statement of a wicked problem, as can be done with an ordinary problem. And secondly, the criteria for judging the validity of a solution to a wicked problem 
is strongly stakeholder dependent. Ordinary problems have solutions that can be objectively evaluated as right or wrong. Choosing a solution to a wicked problem is largely a matter of judgment. So different stakeholders will see different solutions as simply better or worse. Thirdly, solutions to ordinary problems can easily be tried and then abandoned. With wicked problems, every implementation solution has consequences that cannot be undone. Also, every wicked problem is essentially unique. Often an ordinary problem belongs to a class of similar problems that are solved in the same way. And finally, Every wicked problem can be considered to be a symptom of another problem. So for example, in the wicked problems identified earlier, climate change can be linked to poverty, which is also linked to deforestation, desertification, etc. So they tend to be interrelated elements of wicked problems.